Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Plus Three Futures and Commodities Show. It is Saturday, the 14th of May, as we are recording this. My name is Ben Maldonado, and I have with me, as always, my partner, Barry Hedarachi. How are you doing, Barry? Doing pretty well. Uh, interesting week. And as always, we start with uh, the correlator for all risk assets in my <laughs> book, which is Bitcoin. And as we talked about last week, we were threatening to break out of this triangle. Well, it happened and the half square did not stop it. We went straight down just shy of the full square, you know, at around 24,700. For now. For now. So, and I was going to say what it looks like we're doing now with all these, you know, inside bars that have, you know, two inside bars after the big down bar, looks like we're triangulating getting ready for the next move down so uh it is heavy it's uh it's weak and i think we're going to uh, unless we can get above this half square we're we're definitely going to test here uh (laughs) at the full square and there's a lot of questions of whether that'll hold or not Uh, so we'll see but we've been you know we've been on it we were we were bearish up here um and, and you don't have to believe me, go back and check the archives of our videos. We were talking about how, you know, we got stuck at the half square. And then here's where, where the real problem was, is we got stuck under this full square and yeah. then, then the selling started. And then here, you know, it's not rocket science, but, you know, when you're continually getting stuck under here, you know, popping up a few times, but then coming back down and then there's your, there's your sell signal, Right tried to get back above, couldn't, and then there we go. So it's textbook reactions to the to the square and textbook know, bear market. <laughs> and a textbook bear market. Yeah. So I mean, do you have anything else to add other than, you know, we're if you look to the left, you know, we're just sort of hanging around those previous lows of, you know, last year, June, July, August, right now. There's nothing bullish about it yet. So we'll have to see. It's going to have to prove it uh, before we're going to we're going to turn around and say, "Hey, this thing looks good." Yeah, well, we've been looking at that cluster in June, July, and you know, my calls have been like, "It's probably going to go and test it before it's all said and done." Mm-hmm. And um, the interesting thing is, it's not a false break. <clears throat> it certainly doesn't look like, it, and false breaks really can't be two days late. So I, I think uh, it's in trouble. Real, real, you know, we're we're just. Well, it's been in trouble. I, I just think uh, below that half square, it's just going to continue to, you know, grind away towards yeah. lower the, prices. So, last thing I'll say on it before I kick it over to you is the um, this little timing, you know, this cycle that I've been tracking is still running. And June sixth, the area of June sixth would be an interesting time to look for some sort of plunge mm-hmm. low, uh, but we'll see how it plays out. Uh, anyway, let me kick it over to you. Let's get into the big five. Lots of action in uh, in all the markets. So let's see what uh, what it looks like and what you may see coming for next week. Mm-hmm. There's the E mini. Let's uh, take a moment to take it in. <laughs> I mean, the levels are great. I mean, really, really good. Yeah, levels have been uh, very useful again. Mm-hmm. Uh, we left it off, and you know, before I get started on this, you guys, if it's the first time you're seeing it, seeing the, seeing the show, go back and look at the last few episodes because all the charts that we look at, we kind of thread it forward. So, <clears throat> you know, there's a story behind it and, and the storyline that we're carrying, and and we can't obviously we can't cover everything on every show, so we kind of move, we keep moving it forward. So, you know, take a look in that light too. go, go back like three weeks and look at the the show. I'm still, I'm still loving this one where you grab that, that retrace high with the 90, 45 and 30. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was beautiful. Yeah. You can look at it from here or even the high. We call that out. (laughs) So Yeah. 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 All right. So we left off last week looking at this zone and I basically left with one number and that was 4075. And we talked about that, you know, we can't really get any traction above that. We're probably going to slip under and, and end up around 38.96 was the next support. Well, we, we did slip up here, really couldn't market. If you watch the intraday price action, it really couldn't uh, get above 
And once it slipped there, that was it. It was just very violent and volatile, but all the rallies were sold <clears throat> and mm-hmm. hard. And into Thursday, where we, you know, really went down for the wash and, and, and uh, reversed. So I didn't cover the um, calendar day chart last week because I needed to cover it here uh, now and then. But I did post it in real time on our Twitter page, which was really this. And that is, you know, as you know, when it came to Thursday, I posted this Thursday in, in basically in real time. So when we got into that low Thursday, you know, I noticed where, you know, uh, we had a lot of 45 degree counts going into it. So we were 45 from the last high, 90 high to high, and then 135 from the all time high. And usually, just like we caught the high here, this kind of a low where you you know we're driving in with forty five sort of a vibration from three points, you know they have a good chance of holding. So I posted that. Obviously, we can't get that stuff on YouTube in real time. So, so that was there. So, that being said, you know if you guys get a chance, you can follow us on Twitter. And Ben's always posting. I post a little less, but. Um, Nonetheless, there's a lot of stuff there that um, goes out in real time. Mm-hmm. So that being said, now we're back into the same, <laughs> we're back in the same area. So for next week, this 4075 is still important. There's no question. It's actually more important now since we're stuck below the 90, 90 degree um, square on mm-hmm. the way down, which is right here. And that's around 4075. So going forward, let me just um, jump to the... Well, here's the calendar day chart that we normally use, and you can see how we came right into the uh, that 135 from the high of the 90 and a 45, and we were one third into the next square, right? 30 degrees into the next square. So, so there's definitely price and time there, no question. It's a soft one; it's not hard, meaning a quarter. It's a third, but nonetheless, it's there. So it's important to watch that level to see how we how the how price reacts to it. And Barry, like you talked about with the 90 mm-hmm. uh, last week, if we can't hold that price and time, it's, wow. it's, it's really bearish. You mean down here, right? Yeah, on your calendar day. Yeah. yeah. If that low like gets taken that. out this week, you got to really look out. If we take that out, I, I, you know, I'd rather be positioned before that happens. <laughs> so. Right, because that's the that could be the flush, right? The flush we've been looking for to just sort of end this decline. Yeah. And, well, yeah. I think the claim might have more to go, but yeah, for sure. This uh, leg, at least. This yeah. Leg. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah, we don't want to lose this in three or four days. That's just really bad news mm-hmm. altogether. Right. Uh, the longer we can hold above it, you know, I would say that would be a healthier decline versus not. That would be, I wouldn't say unhealthy. I would say just more panic driven. Panic. Yeah. 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 That would be a panic signature. So that's the, regardless, you know, this 47.5 is the one that we have to watch and will be weak below that. Now, there is a number above that, which is 41.50. Let me switch to the um, weekly charts to take a look at that. So weekly wise, you know, we're 216. I'm using this because um, the 72 degree charts working pretty well on the weekly. Now, weekly wise, you know, 41.50 which is about 216 degrees up from the low in 2009 is really the major level, right? That's a, that's the level we shouldn't have broken. Everything everything was healthy. Mm -hmm. And we talked about that at the time and we did break it. Now we're into the, you know, we talked to the measured moves, right? So now we're doing one and a half and clearly, you know, I'm not going to take this 3570 out of the chart yet because that would be, you know, instead of a normal correction like we had over here. Yeah. Now, the key to watch next week is to see if we can, if we take out that 4075, next level to watch will be like 4150, okay, mm-hmm. on mm-hmm. the weekly. I'll just leave it at it. We'll keep it super simple because we're just looking to see where the next resistance is going to be uh, before we turn down again. That's really what it is. It's not even, this is not even any kind of a dip buying. You know. <laughs> no. <laughs> We're not trying to buy the dip. We're trying to sell the rallies here. So that's right. And we have two levels. So 40.75 and 41.50 basis to weekly. Mm-hmm. One other thing I want to cover, we constantly talk about getting stuck below, getting above. And for some 
maybe new people, if, if I just want to clarify, when we say get below, you know, get above and uh, get under, it doesn't mean it has to just go and tap it. It means it needs to really try. And if it gets above, doesn't mean, uh, especially getting above, if it gets about 40, 75, let's say, get, let's say it gets to 40, 80 or 40, 90 even. Mm -hmm. And because the upper end of the zone here, the box I drew in is like 40, 4,100, right? Yeah. So let's say even gets to 4,100, but we reverse within hours, you know, or the overnight session we reverse and then the next day we can't, we can't get back into that level again. That's not getting above. Getting above means it needs to really get above and, and whatever the next pullback needs to hold, hold in this area, at least, you know, balance of, balance of it being above 4075. So it has to really kind of be above it. It can't be like touch and go or mm -hmm. a little peak above or false break above that. Yeah, it's it's the whole thing we talk about, which is get above, stay above, get below, stay below. That, that's mm -hmm. that's clearing the level and you have to clear it for it to be a valid move. Right. And clearing means clear and then any, any kind of a consolidation and uh, retracement should hold above that mm -hmm. to clear to the upside right right the downside is the opposite because we yeah. know that the people who move this market know those levels they understand where they are and they'll push it just beyond enough to make you doubt right you know we just, see it all the time just like it did here i'm telling you yeah, that low is a perfect example right sentiment real time right like hey it should really stop here maybe if i give a little bit you know a little bit lower maybe but no it just flushes so much and i remember at the low, I felt the bearishness in the air. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. Right. And, you know, everybody got loaded up on puts and it was in the, you know, all the uh, option people that are watching all the gamma numbers and all this, you saw that happening. So that happens and then boom, reverses. So the maximum has to get reached and then a little bit more, right? That's that's <laughs> usually what happens. And so <laughs> yeah. the upside, you go max and then you push a little bit more just to sort of, uh, well. Catch people lean in the wrong way. Yeah. You know, it's max fear, right? So we have to get there. All right, we'll leave that at uh, leave it at that. Now, if we do clear forty seventy five, early part of the week, I would expect it to run into at least expiration next Friday. Mm -hmm. So that's the run. If we fail here somehow, we probably run down into the expiration. So that's possible also. But the key pivot level is forty seventy five, and if we get above that, that forty one fifty is really the next resistance. You want to add anything to that, Ben? Or no, I think that's good for that. All right. Next, we have bonds. Again, you guys, you know, go back and check previous episodes. And you guys, you know, we have that, we have it all broken out by chapter. So you can just jump down right to bonds or S&P or gold or other commodities or NASDAQ to catch up to it. So you don't have to watch the whole thing. If you like. And if you like our work, you know, like, please click the likes and share with other traders that you think might benefit or in groups. You know, it'd be good to get some people because if we can get this more viewers and get the channel busy, then we can actually hire somebody professional to um, edit these videos and do the production side because we're really not interested. <laughs> we're just, <laughs> we'd rather just talk about the markets and not have to do any kind of editing and, you know, sure. uploading and all that stuff. We're kind of doing it because it's fun and, you know, it's enough people liking it. So, but if you guys can help out, that would be great. Getting back to bonds, we put, looked at this 140 and for the last couple of weeks talked about how price is probably going to hang around that sort of mean reverting towards that. And that's what we've done. And we dropped this box in a couple of weeks ago and expected that to be the support. And, you know, again, you know, we dropped a little bit under that, which is 216 down from the high. Everything looks good here. Uh, meaning, you know, we went a little bit beyond, which is, you know, that, that's all right. Now, the key is if the this pullback holds above let's say 137, 138, 130, yeah, what, let's say 138. If it can do that, maybe a little bit more upside before we turn back down again. Clearly, this break tells me we're going to go lower. It's just a matter of time. And this 140 level is going to help us figure out when, you know, when that shift is going to start tilting that way. Now, it's already looking like it's tilting that way. But the way the bonds move, it's, it's you know, it, it's, it's, it's really... Um, not that clean. There's a lot of time spent in between. So it's possible we spend a little bit more time here. Maybe try to get up, up in a, one more leg up, maybe do an ABC up mm -hmm. and then, then turn down. So 
I, I don't really have a lot going on in here for now. I, I feel like it's stalled around 140. We need to break out of there. So I, I don't have a whole lot to comment on. What about you, Ben? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the big picture is weak for sure. Love to see it get, us get some sort of ABCD up into resistance that we could sell. There's a, the other note I had on bonds was that we were 45 down in time uh, on the daily at the May 9th lows. So maybe mm -hmm. we get some kind of bounce, you know, like I said, ABC up that right. we could sell would be ideal. Yeah. I would love to see a test up of this area up here. Mm -hmm. Get up there. We'll have to wait and see. For now, you know, it's still weak. So you can take the trades at the downside um, intraday, but the position getting positioned here, I'm not so sure. These are the places to get positioned, you know, over here, over here. I don't think we have to wait to sort of clear us out, but maybe the um, the weekly will help help us a little bit get a better view of what's happening. And the weekly bonds, you can see we drew out this 141 uh, level to be important, and you can see how last week the high last week was exactly tapped exactly that. See that, Ben? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good and, right at your uh, quarter square, right? Right. So for two weeks we've been below that level, and if you go back three weeks, you can see we tried to get above, sold off, and closed under it. So for three weeks, we've been below this 141. It's weak, right? So the first sign of any kind of rally would be obviously being able to hold 141. For now, it's, you know, it's really headed towards, um, you know, 132 would be the next stop. I'm not, I don't have anything, any timing for a low and bottom in bonds right now, <laughs> for now. Right, right. And again, you know, I was looking for this low to be uh, tested or taken out, and we took it out. Remember, we've been talking about this even up here. I was mm -hmm. talking about this. Yeah. Now, look, if this was a false break, we would have already been above 141. Okay. And um, and we're not. Yeah, false breaks don't just sit around. No, they don't sit around. And looks like it kind of tried, but it kind of petered out. So I'm calling it, yeah, yeah no false break here. So that would mean um, it's probably going to consolidate a bit more and then probably go lower. Anyway, you guys know that numbers to watch. So if the forecast is off by a little bit, then check the numbers to see the direction's okay. Move it on to crude. The easiest thing on the market to trade these days, as long as you're not selling it. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So here, look, you know, we've been looking for it to, I think last couple of times we talked about how, why it's bullish that it's consolidating up here above 97 and uh, clearly above this box here. So th what that meant was we we're looking for sort of a break of this 90 and, and looks like we're starting to get it as of Friday. And if we take out this other high over here from early May, and the other key thing to notice is that we settle above this 107, right? So okay, let's say we break and we, you know, any kind of pullbacks are holding above 107, then I think that clears the path to 135 at a minimum. That's what I'm saying for crude. You want to add anything to that, Ben? Just the, you got the nice pattern of higher lows, you know, that's, that was starting to appear in April. You know, you had your April low and then you had... Yeah. A uh, higher low in April, now a higher low in just, May. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can see whomever wants to own this is stepping up the price that they're willing to pay. That's right. So and when that triangle breaks, you know, and I'm you know, going to talk about oil because it's the one, the one, the only, the only com commodity. <laughs> it's the only commodity that's really bullish and really ready, right? Yeah. They're all, the rest of them are still consolidating and correcting and doing different sorts of things, but. This one's set to launch. Mm -hmm. Well, there's the uh, triangle, and mm -hmm. uh, you see where we stopped Friday, and uh, we'll see how it goes next week. But for the books, you know, we're we were bullish about 107. You know, all this area we're bullish. I would say bullish about 105 at this point. So, mm -hmm. and looking at the weekly um, crude, it's even better. And if you guys are following this, you'll see. You know, you'll this is the chart we've been using for a while, and and 90 degrees up was a level that we would like it to hold if everything is bullish. And that's where we got that 97 number. It's right there. And you can see, you know, we pounded it. We got into a little bit, recovered. So for about a month, we've been cleanly above it and um, look, looking uh, fairly bullish here. See how it goes. So basically saying, you know, trade the upside. Selling oil could be dangerous at this point. <laughs> right.
All right, getting into gold. Well, let me catch up with uh, what the hell happened here. <laughs> so, right, right. Boy, gold traders never get a break. Eh? They never catch a break. Okay. The but strong they're about, dollar. They're about I, to soon, though. I mean, all yeah. that's going to pay off. So, yep. Just a matter of time. All right, gold. I mean, we probably need to spend a couple little bit more time. The market's rallying. What we do is look for the best support areas or zones for the counter trends. And, you know, the higher levels, obviously, if the market can hold up above the highest levels, it's stronger. You know, if it gets into a little bit lower level, then it's sort of a medium. And then if it gets really low, it's weak and it's, we're not in the same market. We're not, then, you know, the bull side is done and we have to wait till it uh, cycles around again. And that's what we're doing here, right? Gold ran up. And on the way back down, I drew in this first box. And you guys can go back. This, all this stuff is on, on, um, on the back episodes. You can just look for the week that we have here and look, look up that week. It's all organized uh, that way, at least. So you can, it's easy to go back and reference. We drew the box about, you know, between 1915 and 1940, looking for prices to hold above that being, if it's above that, you know, it, it's healthy and strong. So for the majority of the time, it held above it and we rallied above it, came back. Mm -hmm. We were looking for it to hold here, but it broke through on this bar on the uh, April 25th. And then we added the second zone saying, well, if it's less strong, let's just say, <laughs> mm -hmm. it, should, it should hold above this, 1887 and 1915, which is you know, really healthy uh, zone. And uh, you know, we, we hung in there for a week or two but then, you know, you couldn't make it. You can see how we rallied into that and we failed. So that 1915 is sort of the pivot between these three numbers, right? 1915 is the middle number. And you can see on the May 5th, we ran up there, couldn't really do it, sold off, took out 1887 and, you know, the selling started. So Ben, you were explaining to me how this is sort of tied to the dollar and, right. you, you know, uh, wait for the dollar to top out before jumping on the gold right mm -hmm. so i would say for long-term positions you know my personal opinion is hey any kind of a 20 30 dollar break is a place to add some for whatever long term when i'm saying long i'm talking two to five year positions as far as trading goes which is what these levels are now we're in definitely in weak condition and probably going to go lower because we took out this 1887 was a key level that we shouldn't have taken out if the uptrend was intact. Mm -hmm. It can get all the sloppy it wants, but that 1887, I would like to have seen held, right? And we couldn't take it. 1832 was like lower end buffer, right? And that was okay. And we took that out last week, Friday. Right. All right. So now the next level really is coming down to about 1750. Mm -hmm. And now we can zoom. And also you can see we took, we was ironic. I was laughing about that, joking about this and saying, Hey, listen, if we come back down to visit the lower line, the correction is going to last a lot longer. You know? Right. It's not going to be a quick, uh, quick pullback and then a rally again. You know? So looking at the big picture, 144 up from the low in 2018 is, is sort of the key level that we're watching and you can see that level is sort of bracketed right around the 1720 or 17, 1730, 1740. And let's just say 1740 is the, is the level we want to watch or 1730, let's say. So the next support area is 1730 to 1750, you know, give it 20 bucks just for some sloppiness. Uh, the 1765 I'm probably going to remove, which means gold has more to go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that would be the next area of focus here. To the upside, I'm now 1832 is resistance and 1887 is resistance, but I would like to see it come down and um, do a good test before moving up. And, and, and like I said, that's a really good level that we have there. And if you go to the high, you know, we have a half square right around 1785. Mm -hmm. So we'll be watching to see if that satisfies it. I'm sorry, that's not a half square. That's actually half square 144, but I'm looking at the 72. So we're 72 down <clears throat> based on the square of 72. Would be right around 1789, 1785. So we're watching to see if that holds. 
but from the bigger picture, the 1730 to 1750 seems like the proper proper area for support. So anyway, we're looking for support basically for the longer term. And the 1730 is very close to the 90 degrees down. So that would be the next, you know, from a 90 degree perspective. So for now, yeah, gold is uh, weak unless we can take out and settle above 1832. Looking at the weekly gold. again, Weekly and monthly give you, give you a little different picture, don't they? Yeah, monthly we'll be posting just a little bit later. Mm-hmm. Um, so on the weekly, you know, the key is 1618, uh, 618. It probably worked for gold. <laughs> so Yeah, yeah. Actually, let me add that in there. So that's the key level to watch. It can do all kinds of stuff here, but long term, and I'm saying long, you know, two to five years, uh, this is a really important level to hold and it looks like we will. And if it's some kind of a deflationary sort of a softness, we ought to hold, you know, in this consolidation somewhere. That said, you know, that big triangle support check back, the proper check back would be right around 1780. So we're, you know, we're in the neighborhood for yep. something to happen, get some traction. So we're watching everything. For now, it, it's very soft. We're waiting to see if it hits time and price. And next week, I'll do a little bit more work on uh, gold and we'll be able to look at it more closer. Take a, you know, a little bit more of a deeper look, I guess. On to the dollar, which is probably one of the easier charts to read these days. And I'll just summar- summarize it by saying it's bullish. <laughs> no question. It's a freight train right now rolling down the tracks. Yeah, yeah. It's going for some kind of a blow-off move. And mm-hmm. um, so next week, I'll, I'll try to do some work on the dollar and gold. I think it's time we do like a little bit of a focus on that. Or maybe even separate show, right, Ben? Mm, uh, we could, for sure just on that and spend some time on it. But long-term, look, at a minimum, we're looking at about 112 and, and possibly 114, 115 level up here. And I'm not sure how that's going to happen. Uh, it might not get there. It could be, you know, just go 360 into, into the 360 somewhere, maybe 107. But either way, for now, this next week, uh, we're bullish, especially above uh, this 103.25, I would say. 103.25 is a key level to watch. Let me put that in there. There we go. Mm-hmm. And we're open to 107 on up because we just opened up this entire new 90-degree square. So, and we're almost halfway into it. Yeah, hey, Barry, can you do it? Because I think that was valuable, that review you did about what happens when we get to the edge of the square like we did here um, at the 90 here yeah Mm -hmm. how we it's it's a decision point and it's a time when you know the market's either going to push through the square and and head much higher in this case or it's going to stall and then begin a correction and so and you don't know when it pulls up to that point you know as it does it you don't know which way it's going to go you're just letting price you know tell you and show you what the direction is going to be that's right and, and here it was fairly easy to watch. You know, we have the 90, you know, we tried to get above, had a two day counter trend. So the, the way you trade it is you take that, the low bar, when the high of the low bar gets taken out, that's the trade, you know, right here. Mm-hmm. And uh, then you, from there on, you know, either you add a position or you try trading long side from that point on. And uh, if you go back to the half square, you can see how we kind of crawled up to it, got above it. You know, on this day, November 12th, you can see how we, you know, the day, entire day was spent above it. That's bullish. And you take the high of that consolidation, you're off to the races again, right? Mm-hmm. And do we hit 97? That was, I remember that was our first target. Remember for all That's these right. Weeks? It was 97. <laughs> yeah. We, we hit that and we came back, consolidated and um, back into the half square on 95. That's what we got that. And eventually it started making these higher lows. We're all bullish through here. And here's the check back, right? Look at these three three drives during this entire uh, triangle pattern. You know, came back, it held above the top of the zone, came up here. So long as it's taking out the highs around these key, key levels, half squares or full squares, you know, you have to go with the trend. That's just the trend. Exactly. And we try to keep it simple by just following that, not try to make it. It's very easy to get make GAN charts overly complicated, so we don't want to get into that. And before we get to the week, I'll cover both weeklies at once and just look at the euro. 
because it only take two seconds. Bearish. <laughs> <laughs> right. Look at how it's failing at that 180. That's right. We looked at the 180 and we and and here's well, this is what we're talking about. We talked about this just you know the example reverse of the dollar, right? Mm -hmm. So here you can see how price got stuck below the square. And if it's below, it can't really do much. Well, you know, it's weak, and there you go. It was selling off, and there's plenty more to go. So I would say to trade that uh obviously to the downside and uh look at this 106 area up here as resistance. And once we, if we can manage to get above that, then we can start taking a look at a shift in direction. Looking at the dollar weekly, you know, we're above the 90 degree square. Bullish, bullish. We're going for a blow off, man. I'm going to try to catch this. You know, we will catch it. So it's just a matter of waiting for it to happen. Like Ben, you know, I'm better at catching these things in real time than real time. Yeah. Than uh, way ahead of time. So. And where's your night where's your 90 week timing there what what's that looks like november october this year october yeah, 3rd. yeah that's mm -hmm. october 3rd but yeah, you know we can also um do a 52 here true which is, which is uh working pretty well you know this half square becomes really important so i'm watching also watching this time zone here in july 11th first yep. first or second week of july stability and you can tell the 52 is working just by looking at the key inflection points so so you know 105 106 in that time like spot yeah unless we blow through you know get into 108 109 which i would like to you know that would be better <laughs> <laughs> for sure all right. all right looking at the weekly um euro ugly if you're long oh yeah i mean <laughs> I think it'd be dead by now if you're long. Yeah, yeah. Basically, yeah, just just weakness. It's just you know, say the short side and and look to see where it would rally. Not much to say here, mm -hmm. although we're getting close to a 72 week um, bar. You know, we're getting into the range next week, so we'll have to watch a little closer. Because if we get down to a half square by 72, you know, that's a, that's a decent square to watch in currencies. Well, that's all I have to um, say about the euro. You have anything to add to that, Ben? Now the 72 looks good in, in terms of timing. Let's see what kind of hit we get there. Just overall, it's weak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you know, these lows are just right there. <laughs> it's almost like a double bottom, and we know they don't exist. <laughs> no, no. Worst, I mean, worst case scenario, it goes down further. A best case scenario would be if it just did a false break there, but you, you got to figure they're going to at least do the false break. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Very good. Let me uh, throw it back to you and cover the commodities and okay. the NASDAQ. Yep. There we go. There's the NQs. I mean, there's, there's not a lot to add to the picture. You know, we've been telling the story really since here, right? This, this mm -hmm. was very telling. We had a couple months of, price action around this uh, this full square resistance. And then once it let go, you know, once it realized, okay, we can't get through here, you know, it pushed up a few times and was able to get above it, but uh, there was never, never holding, never holding, never holding, and, and then it was gone. And now we saw the same thing here, you know, on that, on that big uh, sort of bear market rally in March. Mm -hmm. Again, we spent you know three, four, almost a whole week getting stuck under that level, and then we gave it up and, and headed down. The key things for me on this chart now are you know where are reasonable levels for a bottom. Uh, here's one that's about eleven thousand five hundred. If we really get going, you're talking about like ten thousand three hundred, ten thousand four hundred. And and the other thing I'll note is the is the timing here. Um, I did some low to low and high to low uh, times for the the run from the all time high and, and or the actually the January high into um, uh, these March lows and we got sixty calendar days and fifty or these are trade days actually sixty trade days and fifty five that mm -hmm. takes us out to June eighth and June fifteenth so call it second week of June. If, we, if we're running the same cycle would be a, a decent spot to get a, a tradable low until we can get above this yeah this full that's square that's here which is call it twelve thousand eight hundred you know it's it's just really really bearish 
you know, we could bounce up here all, you know, all the way up to that level and, you know, not even break this downtrend line and, and certainly get stuck under that square, which would, which would be bearish. I, mean, I don't know if you've got anything to add on it, but it's you know same story basically. Look, look for bounces into resistance to sell. Right. As far as the commodities go, I only have three commodities to show because you know as as the charts picked up and we did on our show a couple months ago, for some reason the commodities started to you know falter. They weren't making progress to the upside. There was you know either corrections or consolidations, and that sort of that sort of trend is continuing. Uh, we're just waiting for setups and waiting for things to pull into support where, you know, based on the bigger picture, the monthlies, which we're going to release the monthly show shortly as well uh, for, for May, uh, actually for April, we're going to release that one. The big pictures are all still very bullish. It's just using your dailies and the four hours now to figure out, you know, where is this consolidation or correction ending and, and when is the next leg starting? A couple examples are, I'm not going to cover the charts, but gold and silver, very covered gold in depth. You know, we're in a, in a overall very bullish phase, but we're correcting and, and right and now sharply. They, they, the charts there today, they kind of remind me when I was doing my review of how the grains looked last fall, you know, August, September, October gold and silver are starting to do the same thing as they, as the charts shape up and support sort of uh, lets itself be known. And we begin to start setting the base for the next move. We'll, we'll clearly keep you posted on the weekly videos. They're just not ready yet because we don't have definitive bottoms. Uh, but one thing that does and is looking very, very good, which Barry touched on is crude. I'll add, sort of my flavor here on crude. He showed you the triangle. The, the key thing is we're holding above this full square this past week, you know, three days, three of the, of the five days we closed above it. Let's call it 104 and a quarter. I think crude is going to test the, the, the March highs. You know, once we break out here, we're going to test the March highs. And then if it really gets going, and, and again, it's not, not super far-fetched here either. Because the, the, this triangle targets 148, 149, which is right up here, the full square. It's, it's a bullish market. It's giving us the higher lows. And it's really, this past week, it really started pressing. And it looks like the upside momentum is beginning to kick in. So this week should be a, 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 a big week in crude if, if the timing that I'm looking at is right. And we, we could have a, a really nice move in crude. Um, I know you covered crude in depth, but anything to add based on this chart? No, we're good. A couple other markets that I wanted to look at. They're not 100% there, but they're really starting to shape up, and they're in the softs group. Uh, the first one is sugar. Barry and I were talking on Friday afternoon. He's like, what the hell's going on with sugar? And I was like, <laughs> I don't know. Somebody's waking up. Um, but this Somebody, somebody this broke the uh, trend line. They, they really, they, they wanted to own this thing. And it was interesting because uh, last week I talked about sugar and probably the week before too, that, hey, you know, we want to watch this correction and see if we can stay on top of this full square, which is in the, you know, 1850 area. By the way, all of the, um, the levels that both Barry talks about and I talk about are on a spreadsheet that uh, a Google doc that we post the link to when we post the video. So we'll make sure we post that. And so you can get all the levels for all the different commodities, not just the ones we talk about. Um, so anyway, this 1850 level was key. And then on Thursday, they pushed it below and Friday they pushed it below. And then all of a sudden, uh, right before the close, this huge level of buying came in and we closed near the highs. So it looks like sugar, you know, provided this isn't some sort of false false move here, is gonna gonna start making a move up. And the key with sugar, I mean, as you can see, for you know almost a year now, this this 2050 area has been sort of a brick wall. But when we break it, there's going to be a lot of energy stored up uh, for a big move higher in sugar. And again, we reviewed the monthly. When you look at the monthly, you can see that there's a lot of room for sugar to run uh, once we clear this 
you know, what's essentially been a sideways, con, you know, consolidation for almost a year. I like sugar. I like the setup here. It looks like Friday was the start of uh, what could be a fast move higher. We're hoping that uh, that that is the case. But um, what else do you have to add on sugar here? Well, I think we need to really watch this to make sure this is not, you know, some kind of shenanigans. So that half square would be the key level to watch to see if we can get above or not. Yeah, and this level is up. It's about uh, 1950, and that's on the spreadsheet as well. Mm -hmm. So the range, you know, the two levels to watch, 1850 on support and 1950 here on the upside. And, you know, just to point out, if you look at the March low, right on the uh, full square, right there. Mm -hmm. And if what we got Thursday, Friday was the false break, that's what it should look like. It should immediately reverse and run. Yeah, this is this is what a false break looks like. That's right. That's the bar you see on a daily basis. And then we should add to it, right? Like so, we should get you know higher bars coming this week. It shouldn't. If it pulls back into here, then it's yeah. Not, we got more to go. <laughs> yeah. Then we, then we got more garbage to deal with. So so let's see. That's an interesting setup. Um, I like like sugar and based on the monthlies, it's got a it's got a lot of room to run. All right. Let's look at the last one. What goes with sugar, but coffee. Coffee was interesting. And I talked about this last week. You know, this, we had really important support uh, in this 212 area. And early last week, boom, they smacked it down, you know, got right through it. And I was like, okay, here we go. Let's see if, if this is a real break. And the way to tell if this is a real break is when we pull back up into this resistance level now, this 212, can it hold? So if we get stuck under there, or if we got stuck under there, then you could say, okay, this thing's going down. This is bad news for coffee. Well, as you can see, one bar right up through it. And then they tried again the next day, right up through it. And then Friday, while we got a little below it, all three days closed above this level. So that is a, is a, I think, a bullish sign. Now, obviously, we have to break the downtrend line and we have the half square up here. But this looks like maybe some shenanigans taking out this low, taking out this low. And now you know, we're going to be watching coffee closely this week to see if there's more upside progress that can be made. And if we hold this, you know, this 210 to 212 area, coffee looks good, like we may be ready to start the next leg on that as well. Uh, the key thing being, you know, this level is where the highs were in July and October of last year. So if we can sit on top of them and we can stay there, then this was just some games they were playing, you know, probably searching for the stops for the people that bought in here. And, and we may be ready to kick off the next leg higher. What do you see in the chart to coffee here? Well, being a little cautious, but um, again, uh, it's a square that matters. So we'll see if we can hold above the full square and, you know, break through the, um, the trend line. Absolutely. We haven't started the, you know, sort of a technical uptrend yet. I mean, in the short, short term. So in the bigger term, you know, if you take like 2021 lows, we're just simply correcting. Wait for this, is, this is kind of the same method that, um, that we use to point out the grains in the fall, right? You're, you're looking in a longer term uptrend and you're trying to isolate after a multi-month pullback, where is a low forming? And do you have ev enough evidence to get involved with a good risk reward ratio? Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, the, that's the play here. And we're gonna watch the price action closely this week to see if, um, if the weight of the evidence supports that. You know, clearly, if we get back below that you know, 210 to 212 area, there's issues here, you know, there's, there's more, it's got more time to burn off or it, it may be going down hard. So that's the key. And if you can have a tight and a, and a good risk reward ratio with a tight, tight stop where, you know, you can get out generally that works out over time if the setups there. So that's, it's short, but sweet this week, but that's it on commodities. Crude is, is very bullish expecting big things from crude in the short run. Sugar and coffee are ones that need to prove to us that, We've made a, a short-term low, you know, sort of a swing low on the uh, on a correction or a consolidation, and we're ready to move into the next advance phase. So we're going to be watching for 
uh, signs that, and evidence that that's true. The gold and silver have more work to do on the downside, most, most likely. So uh, we're keeping an eye on those as well. In commodity land, it's not a lot to do, but there is going to be a lot to do fairly soon when these things stop their uh, consolidations and corrections. So the, the discipline is to keep an eye on them and, and, and be there in a position when, when they're ready to take off. So that's all from me this week, Barry. Uh, good show and uh, hope you have a great week. Good job, Ben. Thanks. And have a good week, everybody. All right. We'll talk to you soon.